Okay, speaking of not being afraid, Miguna, there was a whole bunch of appointments made by the president recently, parastatal appointments. Mm -hmm. You didn't get one, I didn't get one, it's okay, but... Uh, <laughs> I didn't look for one. <laughs> Neither did I, thank you. <laughs> um, but there was, there was a lot of controversy surrounding the, the, the appointments, Miguna. There were. What your thoughts? Um, uh, there were positives and negatives. Let me start with the negative. I believe that um, there were concentrations in certain families and that should never have happened. Uh, some people were also appointed that I think have outlived their usefulness, mm. either in terms of age or in terms of how many other positions they have held with no result, with no positive result. Some people also have no qualifications, like Alem Mendele, really, yeah. what can he do yeah. in anything yeah. other than politics? Yeah. So I mention him because I think that is a disappointing appointment. Sure. Orokemo, who rejected his appointment, mm. somebody who is already indicted and is wanted, is being, going through extradition. And then appointing members of the Nyachai family, three of them, yeah. th that's a waste of appointment. But, but they're qualified people. I mean, they're smart people. No, no, Guna. it doesn't matter. You see, there are 40 million Kenyans. And these 40 million come from all families and all parts of Kenya. They all deserve something. You cannot take three appointments in one family. That is a no-no anywhere else in the world. Despite meritocracy. It doesn't matter because they are not the only merited people. I mean, where did they go to school that nobody went to? What did they study that nobody has studied? What have they done that nobody has done? What is their character and integrity that nobody has? So on that basis, I think that is a waste of appointment. It's a political liability. Why do you want to invest three uh, on three people in one family? But let me ask you this. Oh, so the, the, no, let me finish. Okay. These are very limited votes. Yes. There, the president made a mistake, I believe. Okay, but if it was three from one Kikuyu family, let's face it, yes. there would have been an uproar. There would have been an uproar but, but for we, a week. We don't know if there were. Nobody has audited the appointments to find there were not. All I'm saying is that there are examples to suggest that something did not happen correctly. And then, of course, appointing people who are over 60, when we have... Uh, millions of youth in this country who yeah. have gone to university and have no jobs. People who have finished from four, yeah. some have gone to college and they have no jobs. You know? Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, the, the interesting thing, I have to bring this up. Yes. Because I know most people expect me to. Yes. I will bring it up. Go on. Uh, Raila's sister is appointed. She's over 60. She's probably over 64. Yes. Uh, she already served in the U.S. as an... Uh, as a, um, a consular general. So she's already had an, appoint, an, an appointment before. Do they reject it because it is a Jubilee government appointing them? Do they say we are not going to take it because she's a mole, she's been appointed by Jubilee? No. They say she's qualified, she's a Kenyan, she's entitled to appointment. What happens when Rachel Mamo goes to the funeral of Fidel? And by the way, mm. The president gave two helicopters, military helicopters, yep. states, uh, uh, state resources to facilitate the burial. That was okay. Rachel Mamo stands up to read her speech. Just because she has been appointed by the president, she's booed. And she's called uh, a traitor. So it means the only people who should be appointed by Jubilee or anywhere else, by anybody else, is the Odinga family but nobody else. So that, I had to take that swipe. Mm. 